Hi, this is Paul Murphy, and today I'm going to show you how to make film titles that are easy to update using Adobe InDesign. This is actually the method I used when I was working on Red Obsession, a feature documentary about the fine wine industry narrated by Russell Crowe, which you can watch now on VOD in the US, or buy on DVD at the end of the year if you're in Australia. Now for those of you wondering why I'm not using the title creator in Premiere, the built-in title creator is good and things like the create new title button and templates are helpful if you already know how your titles are going to look or you don't have a lot of titles. But on this film I had about 40 lower thirds and 60 subtitles to create. So I needed something that I could update easily if the directors turned around and asked me to change the font or the size of the text, which they did. Now a long time ago I used to work in print and one of the great things about the way print design software is set up is you're able to create styles that can be updated after they've been applied to text. So that gave me the idea of using InDesign to create my titles outside of Premiere. And now that InDesign is available as part of the Creative Cloud, it makes even more sense to use it as part of your workflow. So let's get started. The first thing we do is we get all our lower third titles into a Word document. Now what I've done here is put a column break in between each title and what's called a soft return in between each line within the title. This will help us separate out the titles later on and also apply the styles to them. Now we need to import these titles into InDesign. So I open up InDesign and create a new document. Set the intent to digital publishing. It's important that this primary text frame is ticked because that's going to make it easier to import all our text at once. Add the width and height of your video. And down here I like to add title safe margins. So add a 10% border all the way around. And click OK. Now we have our InDesign document and you can see that there is a title safe margin here. And InDesign has already created a text box within the margin. The next thing to do is import our text from Microsoft Word. And we can do that by clicking File, Place, Select your Word document and click Open. And what you'll see is that InDesign has imported the text and created a page for each individual column break we had in our Word document. Let's save the document now. Before we get started stylizing our text, one thing I need to do is add a darker background because I want my text to be white. To do this, I go into what's known as the Master Page where I can control all the settings of these pages just with this one page. I double click the master to edit it. And you know you're in the master because down here on the bottom left it says master. To add my background I go into layers, create a new layer and call it background. I'll also name this layer text. And drag the text layer up so that the background layer is underneath it. Then with the background layer selected, I click the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle around the entire frame. To set the color of the rectangle, I go up to the fill settings, double click and add a gray fill. Because I don't want to include this background when I export, I select the background layer, open the layer options dialog box and untick print layer. I'll also lock the layer so I don't accidentally move it around later. Now while I'm in the master view, I also want to set this text box to align all the text to the bottom of the frame, since we're making lower thirds. And I do that by clicking the text box with the selection tool, and by selecting object, text frame options, and in vertical justification, I select bottom, and click OK. So now if we go back to the pages tab, and double click one of our pages to view it. You'll see that the text is all aligned to the bottom of the frame. Now it's time to add some style to our text. Grab the text tool and select your text and then add your font and size. Select your color by clicking the fill drop down and selecting paper, which is another way of saying white. Now we want to set up a paragraph style for this. So over here in the Paragraph Style tab, we click Create New Style. And what this will do is create a new style based on the settings I've selected in the text box. So I double click to open up the options and I call this Name Left. Since this documentary has some subjects on the left side of the screen and some on the right, 
I'll need to create another style. And I do this by clicking duplicate style and I'll call it name right. I want it to be based on name left. So it takes all the attributes of the style we just created. But the only difference is I want to align to the right side of the screen. So I click indents and spacing and change alignment to right. Click OK. So now I have two styles, one for either side of the screen. One more thing before I finish styling my text, I usually like to have the name look a bit different from the description underneath it. So I'm going to select this line and change the size. Then I go into the character styles and create a new style and I'll call it description. The difference between paragraph and character styles is that character styles only affect the appearance of the text, not the position. So it'll keep the alignment of the paragraph style I have applied and only change its size. Now that we have all our styles set up, it's time to apply the styles to our text. The first thing I do to cut down my work is click edit, select all, which selects all the text on every page and apply the name left style. Then we just move through each page, applying the styles as we go. Just before we finish, one last thing I want to do is apply a drop shadow to all this text. And we do this easily by going into our master page again. Use the selection tool to select the text box and then click object, effects, drop shadow. And this will apply the drop shadow to everything in these text boxes. Click OK. And if we go back into the pages, you can see that we now have a drop shadow applied. So now these titles are ready to be exported. And the way we do that is by going File, Export, select the folder you want to export to, and the format we want is PNG. Click Save. For the range, we want All. For the quality, we want High. And most importantly, we want a transparent background. Then click Export. Now we can import the titles into Premiere, so we go back into our project. Click Import and select all our titles to bring them in. And then you just add them to your timeline. And there we are. Now the whole reason I've done my titles this way is to give myself the flexibility to change them later. So say your director comes back and says, can you change the font to Times New Roman? Then all we have to do is go back into our InDesign document, double click our paragraph style for name left to open it, and change the font to Times New Roman. Leave everything else as it is and click OK. And we'll just need to reapply name right to this title. And you'll see that all the titles have been updated. Then I click export and save over the previous titles using the same settings as before. And it will warn you that you're doing this. Just click apply to all and it will replace all your previous titles. Then we go back into our Premiere project and there it is. All of our titles have been updated. And of course, if I did this through the Premiere title interface, I'd have to go into all 40 titles and update them individually every time I want to make a change. This is also useful if you're working in an offline environment and need to hand over titles for the online edit. So I hope you found this method handy and that it helps you speed up your workflow in the future. Until next time, I'm Paul Murphy and thanks for watching.